Hey, what is up ladies and gentlemen, I'm Sonic the Hedgehog here, and I'm back for some more of the Maxi Toys videos, and ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to more Let's Play of Sonic Forces, for the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PC, and of course, Nintendo Switch. So last time we managed to explore through stages through 21 through 25, no bosses around here this time around though, as a matter of fact, but we did manage to explore through, um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, just only five stages or something like that. But even though, despite the fact that I've uh, managed to have done an improbable tower from my first attempt, as from any other uh, um, any other previous levels, I managed to um, die several times in my own time. But even then, I just want to point things out for this point. So, anyways, today for this episode, folks, is going to be the true finale of not for the actual let's play just yet, but for the main game itself. So even then, though, we're gonna gonna be having ourselves. Five more stages left for our main game, so here we go with, um, Malterra Canyon in stage 26 in Eggman Empire Fortress once again, so, and now we're going to be taking control of Modern Sonic ever since, um, I would say, uh, Metropolis level, which was, uh, Metropolia, um, Highway, or Nell Space, I should probably mention about that, but even then, though, that's, uh, yeah, this this level is by far the shortest, and also is quite easiest, because of how the fact that, first off, as I mentioned earlier, this level can go outright quick, and another thing is worth mentioning, though, is the fact that it gets ridiculously easy. Well, unless if you know where you're able to actually land onto those rails, as you can see here, like, I, I need to time my uh, jump in, in order to actually able to actually get onto the rail, because unlike how it does it in, um, both um, Sonic 06 and Sonic Generations, that in those two games, um, you weren't able to homing attack onto rail uh, grinding rails because you can simply just land on those so easily. But in this game, they have to specifically you try to be able to land onto those uh, grinding rails at the right time. So even then, though, that it gets a little bit too um, nerve wracking in my opinion, just because you might accidentally just overshoot yourself, or even especially notice the ball you don't. Uh, fall off the level quite fast, so even then, as far as I just trying to mention about that, so, I've no idea why I kept on going backtracking right there, especially I was trying to grab that dang red star ring over there, I think it's probably because, um, as you probably guys can clearly tell, that, um, as far as we proceed proceeding for our, um, story progressioning, that sometimes we actually unlock some of these, um, secret stages, if you continuously grabbing yourselves these, uh, red star rings, as you can tell, what these red rings can do is the fact that you were able to actually just to unlock some extra stages, so... But again, I will discuss more details as soon as we get into those stages later down the road, after the main game, as well as the, amongst other the extra stuff here and there too, but anyway. The hardest part about this level for me sometimes is the fact that I've almost got screwed over with those, um... Jet Hawk enemies that are trying to, uh, toss out the bomb projectiles right at me. So even then, as long as I'm able to dodge down with the quick step, I should be fine and pretty much be safe for the most part. But even then though, that, um... I don't know if you noticed, but even then though, that you did saw me actually just manage to clip through those springs again, ever since, like, you, this is a bad example of actually able to actually boost through the springs. Which even then though, there's gonna be some rare occasions when this happens to me though. But even then though, yeah, that's what I can really just try and discuss upon for myself. So anyway, that was it for Martyr Canyon. So, I really don't think there's any walkie-talkies around this time through, because we're pretty much at the final environment, so... Anyway, so we right off the bat though, we go into the next stage as well, and that's the forms of um, stage 27, and we're going back into Eggman Empire, you know, fortress, and we're taking on Infinite for the third time. Alright, Infinite, time for round three? Well, at least you might as well think about it for the time. So, anyway, um, this boss may actually act out quite similar to how it does in the first round against with Infinite, and at the same time, uh, Metal Sonic fight from Red Gate Bridge, because you can tell already that uh, Ravenant is actually going for this little, um, uh, uh, cylinder-based, um, uh, platform and all that stuff, 
because all we have to do is just basically we have to continuously boost. Well, I highly suggest you boost wisely until you wait until whenever he's about to you to able to attack um, infinite injury in time. And yeah, this technique is so similar to Metal Sonic fight in um, Red Gate Bridge because if you attack um, those um, enemies um, hovering, especially with the uh, where infinite is trying to able to actually uh, use them for their defense. But then somehow you get out to homie attack into those little enemies until you're able to, well, simply just able to homie attack into him, and that's pretty much it. So, that was generally, this is much more easier than um, the second phase, or in this case the second round, because I've the, um, the arena itself in the second round is actually a little bit smaller. So even though, no, at least in this round, that at least you can able to do it just as that. Oh right, I totally forgot about the avatars now going to be joining in this fight. So even then, oh, uh, two for one, hey? So anyways though, in this um, second phase on this uh, third and final round, or in this case final round with um, Infinite, because of this though, um, I'll get to my main gripe I have with it until we get to the very end of the game. I mean, you definitely see why coming up. But anyway, um, basically just like how he does it in, you know, Oh jeez, that attack is so similar to Metal Sonic. But even then though, this could be a little bit more, I don't know, laziness or something? I kind of wish it was more likely a little bit more challenging compared to Metal Sonic or the any other bosses for this matter, but somehow it just makes it pathetically easy. But even then, that as soon as you're able to actually use the quick step and all that stuff all the time, then you would be able to realize just how, how ridiculously easy this was. But anyway though, um... Apart from those side of things, it's pretty much a standard boss, but even then though that are oh, great. I'm just one of those little um Phantom Ruby um techniques there, and then it'll spawn in those lasers from the floor. But even then though, as I mentioned earlier, it's a lot easier to actually dodge those things this time compared to how it does in the second round with Infinite with Avatar. But even then though, because of that though, they have so much more open room. So here we go again, here's the moment of truth, double boost, so even then though. In your face, Infinite, so beat that. That was the most anachromatic death sequences. I'm not gonna lie. But anyways, that was it for um Infinite Fight number three. But this time, you know, with uh, Modern Sonic and Avatar all in one combo. But even then though, that does happen before in uh, during the likes of Metal Sonic fight. But even then though, that's all I can really tell. So um yeah, I've almost leveling up my metal system as far as you can see how this is going. And of course, adding some more costumes unlocked from the very get-go. And, you know, not much else we can talk through. And we got ourselves our green hover uh, response now. See, Fernando, that... I, I don't know if I actually use that um, respawn ability, to be honest, because, um, you know, I'm pretty much more accustomed to the, uh, the burst wisp all the time. But even then... Originally, I was trying to show you guys the wisp bombs in this game, but um, let's just say that much. I'm not going to make that happen, unfortunately. But even then, no, that's just how it is for me. So, let's see how Infinite's final word is. Impossible. I cannot be defeated. Wrong, loser. The things that can't be defeated are heart, soul, and the bonds of friendship. Hmm. Three things you and your counterfeit cronies lack. No, wait, I can still fight. Huh? You never fail to surprise me, Sonic. I didn't believe Infinite could lose. Victory will be so much sweeter when I defeat him. Don't think this is over yet, you blue nuisance. My plan just went into overtime. Okay, I have to admit though right away though, is that when the infinite, that I mentioned this before, that we've deal him with for good. Um, is it a bit too early to do that sooner or after? I don't know, but even then though, we've got um, Dr. Eggman to face off against, which is the final um, villain we have to face off in this game. But even then though, before we do that, we got ourselves the last classic Sonic stage, by the way. 
but it forms of Iron Fortress in Eggman Empire Fortress once again. Stage number 28, and of all the stages we're actually going to be hitting to, if you thought that Death Egg level was bad enough, prepare yourselves as one of the most worst classic Sonic levels I've ever experienced in my life. Now it's Iron Fortress. Now basically, all we have to do is very, um, the main premise of this level's gimmick though, as you can see right there, is that these red homing missiles were about to go, uh, after when they go a little bit more twisty, uh, look to them, and then after they just completely go and stand still, um, they'll try to directly home in on you. See, Fernando, you do need to watch out for that particular hazard, because if you don't, on the other hand, you're gonna get yourself hit a lot of times, even especially noticeable where... You know, some situations that you don't, uh, like, you know, don't want to be in a no-death run, and all, or in this case, if you want to be in a no-death run syndrome, then I suggest you're able to actually, although the good thing about this is that, um, you can actually destroy of one of those little, um, red missile, uh, containers, boxes, so that they don't respawn ever again, so, of course, we got ourselves these little spinny platforms, very much like how it does in Scrap Brain Zone from Sonic 1, and Metallic Madness from Sonic CD. Oh, I'm really not a big fan of that music though. It kind of feels a little bit too more... Um, it, every time when I hear this music right there, the Iron Fortress, it just makes my teeth is drilling or something like... And all that stuff, which is, I found is kind of annoying. Anyway though, here's the worst part about this level though, for me though anyway. Is that this particular sequence is an auto scoring section, and if you fudged up at the very end... Or in this case, if you do fudge up at one point, you're gonna do the entire you're gonna have to do the entire section all over again, which even then though, that it feels very remarkably similar to how it does in Super Mario Bros. 3. But it forms of uh, not only for the NES, but for the Mar Super Mario All-Stars as well, so that could be a bad sign for that point, mind you, folks, but it's just mind mind rough worthening. So, and again, I do apologize if my dialogue is going a little bit too much of a well, jumping up mess again because of how the fact that uh, there's not much else to speak of. You know what I mentioned this before? There was actually this little um, event that's been happening through Nintendo Switch during and yesterday. Well, I've watched it and it turns out there's only one project they actually did revealed. And that is the forms of known as Nintendo Labo, which is basically a... Let's just say, uh, something related to the kids that usually just build something, or more accurately, like, building cardboards, crafting stuff. Um, it's kind of like those emphasis, except the fact that, um, well, I believe there are only two games that comes in with, um, Nintendo Labo, which only has, like, a variety set, or even the, um, the robot set as well, so, I think that's what I can think of, but even then, though, that, um, aside from that, I actually do like that uh, concept, but even then, no, I really, I really wasn't really that sure if I want to get that particular project because I'm more used to with hardcore gamer, especially with noticeable with um, you know some other Nintendo Switch stuff. Oh, here's an annoying part too. Jump at the right time. If you don't, on the other hand, you got to go all the way back. So even then, no, that this is what makes this game quite stingy with checkpoints sometimes, very much like in Castlevania 3, at least specifically in the European country versions, or the English version of uh, Castlevania, you know, uh, 3, that uh, you're gonna have to go back into the couple of checkpoints ago, but at least thankfully in the Japanese version of Castlevania 3 actually fixes that tradition, but even then, that can get pretty obnoxious at one point if you kept on dying a lot, but anyway, now I've got myself these two beloved gold medals, as you can tell, from the honors of the Hedgehog. So that means I can get even more costume parts for the Avatar, including West Bonds as well. And yeah, as you can tell, I've grabbed myself a uh, couple of uh, Red Star Rings, and yeah, it can tell you that you've actually unlocked the next extra stage. Which even then, again, I'll get into that in the, um, the extra, extra videos, as far as you might see right here. So anyways, that's it for that, and that really pretty much does it for every single classic Sonic stages. Thank God for that. So anyways, next up we have is stage number 29, back into Eggman Empire Fortress once again. But it forms up in yet another tag team stage, in fact this might be the final one actually. And of course, a final judgment. Final judgment day, huh? Okay, I have to do a quick editing right there, because I need to get a lot of practice on this level, because, um... 
it makes this level kind of a little bit more trickier compared to any other levels of this game so far. Because the thing is about this level though is that if you if you touch off one of those little um um spinning gears and all that stuff, running from that little um, autopilot sequence there, or the uh, little you know auto running sequence there. Oh god, this reminds me of Sonic Heroes in Final Fortress level that we have to dodge those specific. Uh, oh come on, I need some rings before I die. There we go. Please, there might be some rings. I really need some so badly. There we go. I do need some so badly. Right, right off the bat. So, um, anyway, though, um, for that little, uh, Nintendo Labo, that, um, I wasn't really gonna get it, because first off, that I wasn't really keen upon the, um, uh, crafting stuff. Well, I was, I was quite good with the, all that stuff back in the day, but usually I'm more a casual, um, or in this case, a hardcore gamer like I do. But anyway... Um, in this final judgment level, um, um, in the first part of the level is that you can have to run straight forward and dodge enemies as possible. Think, uh, think of like how it does it in Terminal Velocity and Sonic Colors. And then also, if you get into the second part right here, it's the fact that we need to destroy all of those Phantom Ruby um, Glass Stainers. And if you defeat all three of them, then that's it. And also, not to mention in the ending parts, we get ourselves all double boost again. So that means we must get out of here. Do not think that we can trust. But next to you, motion out of through, that's all the battles won. Do not think we can trust to us. The initiative that for our trust. Standing united after the fight. Seriously, that turn is so cool. Even especially noticeable with all that, you know, it's been a long time with the vocal themes of Sonic games at this point. And let me guess, I don't get my S rank, so that's a little bit puny. I might say that much until now. But anyway, though, um, yeah, I believe we only got one more stage left, actually, folks. Spoiler alert, if you those of you might have missed it. And we got a nice little white top hat, which is very much like how it does it in Super Mario Odyssey, where Bowser usually wears his wedding outfit, which could be something related to next month's Let's Play list in our YouTube channel so far. But anyway... Enough about this Super Mario Odyssey stuff until next month, though, anyway. And there was, this is it. The final countdown, in this case, the last stage in this game. Stage number 30, Egg, Egg, Eggman, Empire, um, you know, Empire, Fortress. I kept on forgetting about that stuff. In fact, speaking of the white top hat, I'm actually actually just wear this, because uh, next month is going to be a Super Mario Odyssey um, Let's Play during in next month, so I thought to myself, yeah, I might as well fancy uh, wearing that. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be fighting against the final boss in this game. And that is the Defect Robots. Oh boy. I'm not looking forward to this at all. I swear to God. is officially butt kicked. We won. Hmm. Well, come on, now what? Can we ever just win and have that be the end of it? Look. Gotcha! The fortress reactor was just a decoy. A true winner always keeps his trump card hidden until the end. Sonic, what's going on? There aren't less enemies, there's more. What? Are you fudging serious? This is gonna be the final boss in this game that the robot itself looks like this. 
Does it look like the villain from Sonic Boom Shadow Crystal, which was Lyric, for a small extent? Because look at him. It looks exactly, almost exactly like uh, Lyric from Sonic Boom Shadow Crystal. And, well, bars of Lyric. But anyway, though, um, and also it's a really. I honestly think this is probably is the most dumbest final boss in this game because I can tell you, I can definitely tell you during later on, but for now, we got ourselves the, um, this particular final boss in, quote unquote, final boss in Sonic Forces, which reminds me that I first thought that Infinite was supposed to be the final boss in this game originally, but turns out it wasn't, and what happened to Supersonic Transformations? But I've noticed that because of how the fact that, um, there's no story significance between with um, supersonic transformations and not to mention there's no chaos symbols to be signed here which i thought was like are you kidding me but anyway though um in this particular um final boss in sonic forces actually has three segments uh the first segment first segments as you can tell that um all have to all we have to do is play as classic sonic and then basically you know the um the fights against with egg dragoon from earlier ago that, um, you know, these silver metallic balls did usually act as the projectiles. We have to reflect the, uh, we have to reflect it back right at him until you're able to deal the damage on this particular Death Egg robot. In fact, this feels really unappealing compared to how he does it in, um, Sonic 2 Final Boss in the Death Egg robot, and especially noticeable with the Sonic Generation's counterpart because it's all colorful and bright. But in this, it just feels really gloomy looking because it's all gray and washed out. But anyway though, um, and if you do that multiple times in a classic Sonic portion, in this case the first section in uh, this final boss, then you should be fine. The second phase is the forms of we're going to be taking control of the Avatar character, and basically we have to keep on homing attack into this core center of the body, which is usually this little uh, pink stained glass window over there. And then if you do that multiple times as you can see here, then this phase is pretty much done. If you think that this was over, well... Is it over? No, it's not over yet. I guess it's not gonna be that easy. Sorry, I just made the joke from um, Sonic 06, by the way, for those of you who might have missed it, because of that, you know, the final boss in Sonic 06, which was Solaris, both uh, Phase 1 and Phase 2, but even then, though, that's because of how the fact that I, I constantly stealing that joke. Whatever you think that, you know, the final boss was over yet, but it wasn't over yet. So, you know. <laughs> so, anyways, folks, here we have the third and the final section in the Death Egg Robot. In this case, the final boss in Sonic Forces. And what you know, terrific as you expected from the first time we've ever going to be seen, is a another rehash of the boss fight from Sonic Colors. For a third time, I mean, since it's so, since it's pretty perfect in Sonic Colors, alright, but then it, I might find it a bit okay in Sonic Lost World. But why the hell does it actually use the exact same uh, final boss like this for a third time? Jesus Christ, are they are the developers somehow fall asleep or something? I don't know. But anyways, though, in this particular phase. Is the fact that uh, much like in Infinite Fight Number Three and Metal Sonic, is, Metal Sonic especially, sorry for a little bit of a tongue twisting there, folks. Um, basically, we're gonna have to keep on getting our boost gauge going until you're able to actually catch up to him. However, though, unlike in the other two bosses, they're pretty pathetically easy. Uh, this one might be a little bit more challenging due to how the fact that you need to dodge um, a lot of those um, attacks he's gonna be performing. Like for instance, he actually uses this. Um, uh, flamethrowers, as you can see here, and especially noticeable with all these, um, lasers, or in this case, LASER, from, you know, Sonic Colors and all that stuff, but even then, though, that's as far as I can really try to say about these little particular attacks and all that stuff. I know there's actually another attack around here, but even then, though, that, w that can wait until we're able to actually deal a little bit of damage on this particular face. So, all you have to do is just, you get out to, like, every time when you actually get your green lock-on cursor onto you, you need to keep on mashing the, um, the, um, the action button on the homing attack button until you're able to deal damage on, um, the Death Egg robots, kind of thing about it. And if you do that constantly, then the more damage you'll, t uh, get for, um, you know, the Death Egg robots. 
What I found is a little bit more annoying compared to how he does it in um, uh, the final bosses b for both Sonic Colors and Lost World is that uh, there are so much crap everywhere. Like even then, uh, way more impossible to dodge. And even then, uh, to make matters worse is that if you actually accidentally died on this particular phase of the fight, you have to redo the entire face again, which even then, uh, that can get really irritating if you ask me. So I don't know if you know something for this, people, is the fact that, well, my commentary sounds a bit alright, but sometimes whenever I was trying to boot up my computer for a long time, my footage sometimes lags all the time, which even then, uh, that can get pretty disorientating at times, which even then, uh, that I need to be able to actually just to point things out for this point, folks, if you probably do not know. But anywho, um... Uh, no, there's, a, there's actually another thing I would like to point things out for this point, folks, is that uh, recently, yesterday, I managed to discover there's actually a new update on Sonic Forces Speed Battle, which, if you probably did not know, that Sonic Forces Speed Battle was usually a, uh, I would say a third installment of the Sonic um, Dash series, because it's more accurately, the, uh, uh, the gameplay aspect on Sonic Forces Speed Battle looks very identical to Sonic Dash and Sonic Boom uh, Sonic Dash 2. But even then, except the fact that there's actually four people all in once, so I think it's actually pretty cool. Plus, it's functional and online only, so I thought it was worth mentioning for that. Apparently, that Blaze the Cat was now finally become playable on that app, which I'm not sure why she's absent in this game. But anyways, here we go, folks, with a in a chromatic blow with the triple boost. And there we go, Dr. Eggman is fully destroyed, and even then, though, um, the war itself is pretty much over. So yeah, a little bit more lackluster than the likes of um, Sonic Lost World's final boss, or even especially with Sonic Colors' final boss, because even then, though, no, that... Why does it actually have the exact same reuse uh, boss, um, boss concept altogether? But on the plus side, though, that you can actually take control of three characters all at once, which even then, though, no, it feels very similar to Sonic Heroes, except you can't switch between them, so... And we got ourselves the final Westbound ability, and that was the forms of the Violet Void. Which, you know, if you ever played through Sonic Colors on the DS, this way you can able to suck through all those uh, rings you'll be grabbing. So, Dr. Eggman shirt sure, looks very fancy. In fact, Command J64 may actually loving that particular equipping for that particular Dr. Eggman shirt. So, yeah. And also, I've got myself my Sonic the Hedgehog's uh, shoes, the trademark shoes, which I found is really cool. So yeah, um, yeah, that's all I could say about this final boss in the game. I'm really disappointed that Infinite was not the true final boss in the game. But anyways, enjoy the ending to Sonic Forces for the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PC, and Nintendo Switch. Cheer up, Tails. I'm sure we'll run into him again. All right, guys. It's time we cleaned up the mess that Eggman left this world in. And I'm not talking about those illusions he dreamed up for us. We need to fix the real world we all live in. Right. <laughs> True that. Come on. Let's go. Yeah! yeah. So, overall of Sonic Forces for the, you know, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PC, and Nintendo Switch, it was, a, it was an alright game. I won't say this won't be my best, uh, one of my favorite Sonic games to be exist of, but let's talk about the positive things out of the way first. 
I really do enjoy the um the introduction to the character customization avatar um aspect about the game because that was when after the Deviant Art exists. See, Fernando, that was pretty cool to actually just to customize your own character in the Sonic game for the very first time on the mainstream um Sonic games. Because even then, no, but again, that is where after when um, Deviant Art exists. So yeah, that's pretty interesting, and you can actually uh customize your own things and all that stuff, so even then though, it's pretty awesome, even to this day. And even then though, that's what I can say. The visuals still look very, very good, although, specifically, if you ever play for the PlayStation 4 version or the Xbox One X version of Sonic Forces, then it makes the resolution so much more, uh, vibrant from the likes of the Nintendo Switch version, as you can tell, because the Nintendo Switch version, uh, was exactly the worst of the bunch from the visual standpoint because it's on 720p and 30 frames per second and some of the textures can be a little bit too blurry on the 3D uh, no, what did I say the 3DS? Um, Nintendo Switch version, but at least in the PlayStation 4 version and the Xbox One X version did actually have the higher resolution, specifically Xbox One because, you know, the 4K supports and all that stuff well, the PS4 version also has a 4K support, but I'm gonna, guessing it's pretty much going to be stuck in with, you know, just 1080p, obviously. But even then, visuals still look a bit really um, good, specifically if you ever played the PS4 version or even the Xbox One X version. So, the Nintendo Switch version doesn't look that bad for the visual standpoints, don't get me wrong, but I've noticed there are some, um, um, you know, blurry textures in some points or another, but... That's where the positives end, because I'm saying that because, uh, we'll get to the negative things right about now. Uh, first off, the story looks a little bit more too generic in my opinion, just because of how the fact that, um, well, I do found Infinite to be an interesting villain, but apart from that though, the story, and especially the ending, just feels a little bit too rushed. Even especially noticeable how the developers of the, um, the story departments just sort of feels a bit too tired, or maybe just, uh, did the developers just somehow fall asleep or something like that? I'm not exactly sure, but even then, the story won't, is, won't be exactly as deep compared to Generations, although I still found that Generations story can be a little bit too underwhelming in my opinion, but the best story of all the Sonic games in my opinion will probably be, have to be um, Sonic the Hedgehog 3 and Knuckles, and even especially Sonic Mania, or even Sonic Unleashed or something like that related to that, but still. So, um, and another negative thing is the fact that I found a soundtrack. Well, the only one exception which two forms are Fist Pump, because that was actually the most memorable song in this game. But everything else, like the, uh, the classic Sonic's music, is pretty underwhelming. And also is a little bit more dumped down compared to Generations had. Because Sonic Colors and Generations, and even Lost World, have the most amazing music set piece. But Forces, on the other hand, is really lackluster this time around, because it feels a little bit too more, I don't know, uh, generic, or especially just a felt place and sounds playing bad, like the classic Sonic stages I mentioned earlier for the musics themselves. And speaking of, of that, uh, let's get into the other negative thing for um, next, is that... Well, the controls might be take a while to get used to, but sometimes it just makes me go through the roof if I manage to go and just directly tilt my analog stick or even touch my directional pad, and then sometimes my controlling character just goes over the freaking roof. But even then, I, that's why uh, I really do miss the, um, and speaking of such another negative thing is that I really, really do miss the, um, the drifting mechanic ever since, you know, Sonic Unleashed Colors and Generations, but... Somehow just took that out ability, but even then, that makes me feel also disappointed. And speaking of such, you notice how the fact that I was so disappointed with the final boss in this game, because at first I thought it was going to be infinite, it's going to be still reviving from all that Phantom Ruby's uh, revival power, but no, we got ourselves another rehash of Sonic Colors final boss again, which I kind of wish if the next Sonic game won't able to do that again, which I was really hoping it won't be. But anyway, though, um, but apart from that, though, that as far as the actual main gameplay itself of Sonic Forces, obviously there are three different playable characters you can actually play as. There's Modern Sonic, of course, Classic Sonic, and the newcomer, the Avatar, or Custom Hero, whatever you want to call it. 
I actually enjoy modern Sonic's gameplay a little bit more, just because of how the fact that if you ever played um, Sonic Generation, Sonic Unleashed, and especially Sonic Colors before, um, he plays almost exactly what uh, he almost plays exactly like how he does it for those three games, except that um, he still has his double jump ever since Sonic Colors, and I believe Sonic Lost World as well. Even though now I haven't really um, just gone back into Sonic Lost World for quite some time. But even then, though, that um, it does have a boost formula, which is really, really cool. My only major gripe I have with modern Sonic, though, is the fact that, as I mentioned earlier, the absence of the drifting uh, mechanic, and also not to mention, the 2D section in the modern Sonic just gets a little bit tap bit more worse than the likes of um, Sonic Lost World has. But even now, because of their stiffest jump or what have you, and sometimes your uh, mid uh, control doesn't feel as uh, fluid as I was hoping it would be. And um, that's why I can really talk about that. So I do enjoy the modern Sonic for a moment there. And as for the Avatar, um, again, I found to be an interesting gimmick, especially noticeable that he plays it almost exactly like how he does it in modern Sonic in this game, but except the fact that there's no double jump or even especially noticeable. Well, there is actually there's some drifting mechanic there, but it's all completely autopilot, especially with the grappling hook is actually introduced. And the worst parts were well, found a kind of situational, but the only ones I did usually use the most are now two forms of the burst worst spawn, which even I know that's the one worst I usually use the most. But anyway, uh, my only gripe I have with the Avatar's gameplay style is that while it might be similar to the Sonic's uh, modern Sonic's uh, gameplay aspect, is that the controls might take a little bit some time. I kind of wish the Avatar does have a double jump ability, just like Sonic does, or in this case, modern Sonic, if you will. And also not to mention that um, sometimes if I lose my footing with all these platforming timing jumps and all that stuff, I always ended up overshooting stuff very, very fast. And even though no, that just wasn't as pleasant as I was hoping it would be. And let's get to the third and final playable character, which I'll say the worst for last. Classic Sonic. Easily the worst aspect about the game for me, and that is the forms of Classic Sonic in this game. He's way worse than the likes of Sonic Generations to me, because he, first off, he's so stiff, and plus, not to mention, the physics and the momentum is screwed over in this game, just like how it does in Sonic the Hedgehog for Episode 1, by the way. And the music, or in this case, the actual soundtrack of classic Sonic stages is very un unmemorable. But even then, no, that's all I can really say about classic Sonic. He definitely is the worst aspect about the game. And then... I kind of prefer playing as uh, Classic Sonic and Sonic Mania, and especially Sonic Generations. I'll take those games any day. But apart from those negatives out of the way, it's a pretty okay game. Not, um, well, definitely not worth a full price. Wait for a price drop or something like that. But it's a pretty alright game. But even then, the only enjoyable parts are the custom heroes and all that stuff. But yeah, that's all I can really say about this here. So... Of course, this Let's Play wasn't exactly over yet for this point, folks, because I'm going to end things off here as soon as the credit sequence is about to be over and done with. So, to me next time... Oh yeah, I did not actually know something right off the get-go, is that Omega, E123 Omega, is now joining with the army crew, which I found was like... Oh my god, he actually come back. Huh, I did not notice that. So anyways, um, yeah, I'm gonna have to end things off here, folks, so to me next time on Let's Play Sonic Forces for the PlayStation 4... Xbox One, PC, and Nintendo Switch. Is the fact that we're going to be uh, playing through Episode Shadow, which I think I believe is actually a prequel tale of Sonic Forces. So even then, I might as well actually go for Episode Shadow next. So um, yeah, enjoy this last cutscene of the game of um, you know Sonic um, Forces. And until then, this is me, Sonic the Hedgehog. And until then, see you guys next time for Episode Shadow in Sonic Forces. So. Enjoy this final scene, folks, and see you guys next time. Later, fellas. Finally, an end to this endless battle. Everyone can go back home and relax. There's no need for the resistance. Hold on. There's still a lot we need to do. We're just getting started. Hmm. Huh? What? You're leaving us? There are others who need your help. But okay, I'm not gonna stop you. Man, 
The first time I saw you stumbling around, I had no idea you could pull this thing together and see it to the end. I've changed my mind about you. <laughs> I knew you'd come through, rookie. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess you're not a rookie anymore. You did good out there. <laughs> it's not like you just waited till the last minute to come in and act all cool to save the day. <laughs> Our battle is done, and our resistance has come to a conclusion. But we'll be friends forever. A single person cannot restore the entire world. We have to work together and make a diligent effort. Yeah. Hey, you're taking off too? I was thinking the same thing. You gonna keep moving forward? No matter what, yeah? You and I aren't so different. Hmm. See you later, buddy.